Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK, this is Fluid Ninja Live, and this is going to be the fourth episode on character effects. Please have a look at the project homepage and there you will find a link to all these tutorial videos in the right order. And this time we are going to talk about how to associate multiple sim containers to a single character. You remember last time we did this uh, experiment by displacing the trace mesh and creating custom sockets to make this flaming eye thing and say I would like to have uh, something on the hands as well well this might be easy you think I'm just editing the blueprint rescaling the trace mesh a bit and uh, simply adding these bones I mean the hand bones. Well, let's see what we have. Right, so we have like two smoking rings on the fingers, but I want them with different color and different size and all things different. And that's not going to happen in case if we have a single container, because a single container is associated uh, with a single material and the brush size and all these things are somewhat limited so if I would like to have something completely different on the hands I cannot avoid add a second container so how could we do this? well there are at least three ways and many more we are covering first uh, this is the most simple solution with many drawbacks um, so um, we are simply going to the Fluid Ninja Live root folder, dragging a Ninja Live actor on stage, and in the word outliner, simply uh, dragging the Ninja Live actor under the character, this way linking it to the character. And um, I'm copying the character location to the location of this actor. I'm sorry, I have to fill it with zeros since they are linked, right? And I'm setting this uh, fluid simulation plane a bit bigger in the interaction menu. Overlapping area as well. And I'm setting it um, camera facing in the component. In the live interaction. Here we go. So let's see what we have. Well, <laughs> we are tracking all the bones and it's all smoking. Well, the thing is, it's working. Say I would like to have this thing uh, limited to these, uh, the, the, to the palms. Remember, when we had this Ninja Live component and we provided these bones, I'm just simply copying the name. By the way, I'm removing it from the Ninja Live component. So, the component that is built into the character is tracking the two eye bones, eye sockets, and that's it. And I'm providing these hand bones to this actor, which I have been manually attaching. I'm selecting the actor, and here in the live interaction we have this um, bone name filter. I'm adding two slots for the two bones, left and right, and probably it's going to be fine, yes. so. What we have now, we have smoky thing on the hands and on the eyes and it looks different and it could be driven with different parameters, so, well, it works. But the thing is that I have been adding it manually. And what if I would like to spawn the character? Well, it's not going to work because I've simply <laughs> attached it to the character. Okay, so uh, this was solution one. And it's a really simple solution and it's not going to work most of the cases. A second, what if I uh, command the character blueprint to spawn an Ninja Live actor and attach it? Well, I'm just starting another Unreal Editor. Because in the Fluid Ninja Live uh, tutorial kit you will find such an example. Here we go. So this is the Fluid Ninja Live folder and you see there is this mannequin usage examples. If you click that, 
you will find four blueprints and here ninja spawned attached if you double click it uh, you will see a detailed explanation how to spawn a ninja live actor and how to preset the parameters of it before spawning um, this is uh, somewhat better than manually placing it so the character could be spawned and ninja life could be spawned as well but there are certain drawbacks first uh, you might have noticed that ninja live actor is a, is a complex system for example it does a lot of overlap detection and all things which are not needed if you embed ninja live component to a character so the perfect solution would be and i'm deleting this manually spawned thing here oh, i'm sorry again yep so the perf perfect solution would be um to add a second ninja live component and this is like a perfect solution because it could be handled together with the character spawned together with the character and let's see how we could do this so first I'm selecting the character and um, in the word outliner I'm kindly asking Andrea to take me to the character blueprint third person character and here as in the previous tutorials we have an ninja live component attached first thing I would like to do is to duplicate the trace mesh yeah trace mesh 2 would be fine and I am move it back to the project root since it is in the project root it is going to follow the capsule component please remember that we would like to reproduce this uh, smoke on hand thing and I would like to remind, remind you that we are in this third part of the video so we are adding a second ninja live component to our character and it starts by duplicating the trace mesh here uh, we want the same thing we want this trace mesh to be camera facing so I'm duplicating this externally called function and I'm asking it to make my second trace mesh camera facing as well okay um, well let's see what we have well nothing has changed because this trace mesh is invisible probably I'm going to the rendering switching on visible Uh -huh. here we go and one more thing I would like to do is to offset a, a little bit well yeah uh -huh. okay uh -huh. here we go so we have a second trace mesh and it is associated uh, with the hip bone of the character at least somehow it is in the middle of the character and so I would like to add a second uh, ninja live component as well let's do this uh, surprisingly I'm just duplicating it saying ninja live component 2 and let's rename the first one to ninja live component 1 so ninja live component 1 is handling the eyes probably and ninja live component 2 is going to be associated with the with the hands just selecting the character oh by the way the skirt thing disturbs me so again I'm just um, making the trace mesh invisible and returning to the blueprint uh, I'm setting this second trace mesh to the second ninja live component I'm simply telling ninja live component 2 that hey we have this second trace mesh would you please use it to map the fluid simulation to okay so we have two trace mesh two ninja live components and finally on the details panel I am just uh, checking the associated parameters so ninja live component 2 uh, it is in single target mode I switch it off to have the thing on both hands yep the bone names are okay 
the materials seems generic oh yeah we have the smoky hands simple in it well have a look at this uh -oh, problems with the line tracing we have a serious interference because the two ninja life components are uh, using a line trace to find their targets and since we have two ninja life components embedded in the same actor we have a conflict and we have to resolve this mm, yeah <laughs> let's do this so uh, first how about having a look at the ninja life component blueprint yep um, it's pretty much labeled up but I'm zooming it purposely. You see, this is the place where line trace happens. And this is the branch where bones are being line traced. So I'm just double clicking this group. And here is a function. So it's called from an external library. And I'm going inside. And so here we are in the trace function. Um, you see this? Actors to ignore. That's the problem here. Because um, you could place a hundred ninja life components, uh, sorry, actors on level and they could easily ignore each other using this feature of the line trace node because it is able to uh, ignore actors. But the problem here is that we have to ignore, uh, well, uh, a component because this uh, in the third person character, these are just components. So we can't use this uh, uh, feature of the node to ignore actors and the node doesn't support uh, ignoring uh, actor components. So what we would like to do is, well, many ways to go, really, it's up to you, but I would like to add a second trace channel. So I'm going to the project settings and try pin trace. You see, we have this fluid trace. This is covered in one of the first videos. And I'm saying new trace channel, please. And let's call this fluid trace 2. Fluid trace 2. And the default response is ignore. So we have two fluid trace channels. And as you could see, this is not controlled by variables. It is simply manually set to fluid trace. So I'm pulling out a string, a wire, um, <laughs> and taking that wire to the input node. And here the trace channel is now, well, uh, exposed on the function interface. Okay, so I was pulling out a wire from here, from the trace channel. And before I leave, I just go here and set the default response to fluid trace. This is the ninja default. I'm saving save. Uh, if you're interested, what is this function library? You could go to the browse button. And here in the Fluid Ninja Life per core, we have this Ninja Life functions with at least 20 of these guys. So our job here is done. I'm closing this function library. Going back to the com mm, component, as you could see, the trace channel appeared on the function input interface. So what I would like to do is to um, expose it to a variable. Repeating, we are in the Ninja Life component. And if I expose it to a variable, oh uh, yeah, let's just call it trace channel. Uh, yep, as you could see uh, on the variable list, first, it is not public, and second, it is in somewhere in the root of variables. So just placing it to the live interaction group. Yep. And second, I make it public. I expose it trace channel. Uh, important. We have been editing this part, trace objects too. We have to wire or freshly created variable to other places. This is a, a line trace function or single target mode and this is tracing gestures yep it's not even needed here so um, we have finished updating the line tracer probably we would be able to provide the second line trace channel from the character but there is one more thing we would like to do 
Do you see this uh, group here in the pre-calculation supergroup? It is called block one. It's pre-calculate operations. And here is set trace mesh. And as you could see, again, manually provided fluid trace. So what I would like to do is to promote it to a variable. And some of you might ask, why don't you use the already existing trace channel variable? I tell you why. That's the reason. I cannot connect it. Unreal calls this thing trace channel, uh, but it's very misleading because it is using two different types of variables. What actually this thing is, when I set the object response, is like um, um, object channel. So just call this variable object channel and I uh, compile the blueprint. I set the, ah oh yeah, fine, it's by default set to fluid trace. And I'm moving the object channel variable to the live interaction group and I'm setting it to public. So I would like to briefly sum up what we have been doing in the Ninja Live component blueprint. We have been adding two variables, trace channel and object channel. And both variables have been made public. Both uh, are coming with the default value of fluid trace, but they belong to two different types. One is setting how the trace mesh is going to respond to the line trace. This is object channel. And the other variable is setting for the line tracer mm, what to trace. So uh, our job here is done in the Ninja Live component. And so here we are in the third person character. You remember why we have started this whole miserable uh, blueprint editing? It is because the line tracers were interfering. So I'm selecting Ninja Live component 2. And if we are lucky in the live interaction group, ah, we have these two guys, trace channel, object channel. Well, as you could see with Ninja Life component one, we leave it as it is, fluid trace, fine. And with Ninja Life component two, we set it to fluid trace two. So this is going to be using the second trace channel. And if we are lucky enough, yep, one more thing to do. Mm, probably it's the single object mode that is forced. And there is one more thing to check. So this is fluid trace 2, fluid trace 1. Um, oh, well, finally, I'm just checking the details. Well, it should be fine. Ah, yep. Uh, hmm. There is one more thing, probably, uh, or palms. Well, our second line tracer is also detecting, uh, also detecting the head. Let me do a few restrictions first. I'm going to the first component and I'm deleting word dynamic and word static. So we are, we are focusing on the pawn and these two bones. And in the second line tracer, I do the same thing. I remove and we are focusing on these bones. Uh -huh. And yes, after we have made these restrictions, we have two line tracers and we have uh, different sockets and bones and we have two ninja life components built into the same character and two trace meshes built into the same character and so this is the most elegant way and most efficient way to somehow um, put multiple fluid simulations into a single character well surely that's it a bit complicated and there's so many ways to go so many ways to implement this i just wanted to give you a uh, an example thank you for your attention so we have been 
covering this part and see you next time.